look at the fraud analysis dashboard. So the first thing you'll notice again is at the top of the dashboard, we have our KPIs and metrics that are important to us, including the number of claims, the claim amount. And if we start over here on the left, we can see there's a breakdown of predicted fraud. Again, this is our prediction. So we can see the predicted fraud versus the number of investigations. We can compare that to the rate of investigation for our predicted non-fraud. I can also see if we have any patterns and trends by employment status. And I can see that in some cases, it looks like we might have more fraud associated with certain employment statuses. In this case, there is a pattern or trend that there are more folks who are unemployed who are engaging in, in some fraudulent claims. And I can see those numbers in detail just to the right of that bar chart. So I can actually look at some of the detail here, the number of policies associated, um, the medical expenses, property loss, etc. Now, if I want to get into um, some high-level information or metrics on the bottom right here, I can see my total claim amount and then a breakdown of the property loss and the medical expense over time. So this is over the course of this year, beginning January to the current time frame, and this is overlaid with the number of claims as well. So I can see patterns and trends in the claims that are being submitted, um, as well as the amounts. And again, this is predicted fraud. So if these claims were to be paid out, it would be pretty costly for the business. Now, the other thing that's important is to understand some of the key drivers for some of this behavior. And what we have on the bottom left here is a sand key chart that helps us to understand some of the drivers for fraud. So for example, we can see that there are, is more often than not a witness associated when folks are engaged in fraud. The car is towed. Again, this is auto policies. Um, there tend to, tends to be a police report filed. And then there are some patterns in terms of the age groups that are engaged in fraud. Now, before I go down to a detailed report, let's look at some additional metrics for fraud. So there's a lot of data, a lot of information. We didn't want to lose anything here. So I can, I can check my fraud cases by coverage type, and we can see that there's more fraud associated with collision claims and rental reimbursements and then property damage for those folks who are uninsured or underinsured. Um, so for the other, the other claimant. I can also, again, look at a geographic view of my fraudulent claims, and I can see that there are some patterns here. So for example, in uh, Pennsylvania, Venango County seems to have a higher incidence of fraudulent claims. I can also see my fraud predictions by age and resident type. So I'm looking at my fraud group here, and I can see that if you're a 20 to 24 year old renter, the likelihood of fraud is increased, right? We're seeing predicted fraud at a higher rate. Uh, and the, the claim amount for that group alone is $2.34 million. So if we were to pay that out, we'd be out $2 million. So that's some really good insight there. We have the predicted fraud by time periods. We can view a trend over time. Again, this is over the course of this year. And we have some information on the policy level, um, some information about the claim date, et cetera, claim amount. Now, if we wanna look in more detail for the, the fraud information, let's go ahead and actually drill through to a detailed report. So I'm just gonna open up my report. And again, you'll see we have a report that gives us the policy level information. We have a prediction of fraud. We have a confidence score in the prediction. And I can see just the way that we have things sorted here, that we're highly confident that these particular claims are indeed fraudulent. So again, we can get some really good information that can be used at an operational level. You can look at groups of results, you can look at the individual results. Um, and again, we have some filters here. I can filter by coverage type. So if I just wanna look at collision, I can do that for fraud. So let's go ahead and apply that. Now this gives me a filtered list, I have 73 claims for collision. 
that are predicted to be fraud, and it accounts for over $213,000 in the claim amount. So you could spend a good amount of time just digging into the detail. Um, you have the high-level executive dashboard view that gives you the picture of fraud at a company level, and then we can get to the detailed report where we can see at the policy level some good information about the policyholder, the claim information as well that can be used um, by the folks on the front line. 